So this is day one of a crumbling foundation replacement. One of the first things we have to do is access the bolts that hold the sill plate to the foundation. Um, in this particular house, there were bolts, but there were no nuts on them. I'm just gonna show you some of the damage uh, that the Puritite crumbling foundations creates. This is uh, in the garage. <clears throat> We normally don't see such bad damage in the garage, but I think it's probably because outside the level of ground is right up at the bottom of the siding. So it's probably a water area, which caused it to go um, bad a lot faster. Outside corners are usually the first to go. I'm just gonna show you um, each of the corners on this house. I think one of the most important things you have to understand um, with these houses that have crumbling foundations is that life pretty much stops once you find out you have a crumbling foundation. Um, we always say, don't do anything but change the light bulbs. So a lot of these houses will be in need of a roof or a new deck or, you know, it hasn't been power washed in years or the grass looks kind of crappy. Um, that's the whole reason why, because people know that their yards are going to be torn up, their house is going to be torn up, and there's really no point in doing anything um, to improve the house. Uh, not to mention that once you have a crumbling foundation, uh, these banks are not going to loan you any money. And that's usually how people pay for major renovations and repairs is through a home equity loan, and that just isn't an option here. This basement has a partially finished basement, which of course is all going to have to be removed. Another thing you'll often see in these older houses um, are old appliances, uh, water heaters, oil tanks, etc. Uh, we often tell people because everything has to come out. Uh, if you if you have older stuff, don't replace it until the time of your foundation replacement. I mean, it's the best time to do it because everything has to come out anyway. Um, this house was built in 1986, so it's got some older appliances that they just ended up limping through uh, until now that they can get their foundation replaced. So the rule of thumb is anything that touches the concrete has to be removed. Um, one of the issues that we run into is um, staircases that come down um, the new code is they have to be 36 inches away from the bottom step. Um, this one does not meet code. Even with this wall gone, it's not going to meet code. So what the towns make us do is they make us take the originals out and put them back in. If we build a new set of stairs, then they make us bring it up to code, which is something that we couldn't do because if we brought it up to code, then we would have to cut up into the floor in the house. And, um, you know, that would result in a lot more work. Basement floors have to be removed and all the utilities have to come out. So we find an area where we can build a ramp down and get inside the building. Uh -huh. Once the ramp is complete and an area has been opened up, the floors get cut and removed. One of the nice things about having real small equipment <clears throat> is that we can actually get it inside this foyer here and um, use the little hammer to break apart the, the floor and the fireplace. The chimney is going to be lifted with the house. This is the breezeway portion here 
and then there's a fireplace within the frame portion of the house on the other side of this wall um, which will not be touched that fireplace will be fine um, the base of this chimney is about 10 feet uh, wide I'm going to show you a picture of it from the basement the National Institute of Science and Technology have been here the last few days collecting core samples. They're doing a study on pyrotite and its effect on concrete. I'm just going to go downstairs and show you all the core samples that they've taken from this project. The sunroom is connected to the house, so we will be lifting that along with the house. The issue with this deck is that it is actually bolted to the foundation. And of course, since the foundation is coming out, um, all these bolts will have to come out. Um, there's only a couple of bolts in here. We've dismantled it to the point where it's just hanging on until it's supported by the beams for the lift. And then it, it will go up along with the house. If it were a case of there was just a deck here, and not a sunroom attached to it. The deck would just be removed from the house and put aside and put back on afterwards. So in a normal situation, we would be ready for the lifters in a couple of days. Uh, the biggest part of preparing for them is cleaning out the basement if there's a finished portion. If there's a great big finished por portion to take out, it may take a couple of days just to do that. Um, this house only had a small finished area of the basement, so it was out in a few hours. We got all the utilities out, um, but we have a little more work to do here to get ready for the lifters because of that huge chimney, um, because of the fact that the breezeway is a slab on grade. Um, he's actually going to come by today and tell us what else we need to do. We always try to make it as easy for him as possible so he can come in and run his beams and um, be out of here as quickly as possible. All of our concrete uh, gets put in dumpsters and is hauled off site. So that's the end of the first video in the series of a foundation replacement. Um, if you enjoy this content, please hit a like or follow and I will try to have a new video out every single week while this project is being done. Thanks.